You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Having traveled a good piece with myself, I feel a part of almost a member of this enterprise. You call yourselves Americans, but you're really just transplanted Englishmen. Look at your names. Lee, Hood, Longstreet, Jackson, Stewart. My people were Dutch. And the same for your adversaries. Me, the Hooker, Hancock, and, shall I say, Lincoln. <laughs> the same God, same language, same culture and history, same songs, stories, legends, myths. Different dreams. Different dreams. So very sad, very sad. You English had your own civil war once, didn't you? Oh, that was ages ago. Wouldn't dream of it now. It's Cavaliers and Roundheads. You should have freed the slaves then fired on Fort Sumter. Yeah, I guess we Southerners and you English have at least one thing in common. I'd rather lose the war than admit to the mistake. <laughs> that is uh, old Artie Fremantle there um, from the movie Gettysburg with uh, Longstreet. You know, just having a cup of coffee and a cup of tea, just talking about whatever they talked about. Talking about the war, all these deep conversations while the battle is in the air. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, episode of Addressing Gettysburg on Patreon.com. I'd like to welcome our guest today. His name is Daryl Rivers. Hello, Daryl. Hello. How are you today? I'm quite peachy. Daryl has come all the way from California strictly to do this show, ladies and gentlemen. He, all he wanted to do was come out and do Addressing Gettysburg, and he said, I will buy a plane ticket and come out just to meet you. Isn't that right, Daryl? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Okay. No, in, in reality, you're actually here for some other purpose that's yeah. much bigger than us. Huge. Which is what? Just different work stuff. Different work stuff. But, you know. Well, it's bigger uh, than no, us. No, no, it's definitely just for Addressing Gettysburg. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, no, you don't have yeah. to say that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, please. Please. Nobody does anything just for Addressing Gettysburg. Well, that's not true. But uh, anyway, they, they certainly don't spend money on airfare to come out here just to be on Addressing Gettysburg. Oh, no, you're not I'm paying saying. for all this? No, no. <laughs> no, did you tell them we're paying? I didn't. Yeah, he, he definitely <laughs> did. Well, then you're fired. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we're, we're here to uh, talk about a lot of uh, different things. You're a very interesting guy. Well, thank you. Let I me find just, myself quite interesting. Let me refer to my notes here, because you do a lot of different things, and I can't commit things to memory anymore. Yes. Once you hit 40... Uh, it all goes down the drain. Uh, let's see here. You're from California. I said that. You uh, you run the biggest Civil War event in California. Yeah. I Let me ask the, you this, though. Is it the only Civil War it event? It is not. The okay. Only Civil so it War actually event. is the biggest. There is a, a thriving Civil War reenactment community in, in the Western states. Good. Okay. Um, and then you run the biggest Rev War event on the West Coast. Now, yeah. you, you made, it's, a, it's you made pretty, a distinction it's pretty there. It's new. It's pretty new because. Um, a little closer to that mic, sir. It, it, it's it's new, you know. The idea of doing Rev War out in uh, out in California, there were there was just one British unit, and uh, they didn't really have anybody to play with. And we we started doing uh, more Rev War in the same site as our Civil War, but shaven. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, so you have like half shaved. the year with a beard and half the year without. There's there's one horrible month without the beard. Oh, and just one comes, month, and then it comes back. Okay, because you've got a pretty good growth there. Yes, you know I have to I have to be in in tune for Santa season. Yeah, I haven't had some. I haven't had no facial hair since I was able to start growing it. Like I, the minute I could grow it, I'm like, let's hide this thing. Yeah, yeah. As have, much you have as to we commit can. when you're doing Rev War. Yeah, right. So that's the that's the reason. If I ever got into reenacting, I could never do Rev War no. or anything where I couldn't have a beard. Because I I absolutely hate the way I look. Like chicken lips and, you know, not a very strong chin. Don't but, like it. But you can have Victorian facial hair. Yeah. 
And that's, that's why and it's fine. Yeah. Um, let's see what else here. You're also a historical consultant for films and other things that comes with being in California. Mm -hmm. you know, you it's to, perfect. Have to attempt to uh, make Hollywood a little more accurate. Right. And, and how do they listen? They, they don't have to listen. Sometimes right. they listen. So why do they have you on? Um, never understood this. Ticking. Cause what? Box ticking. Box ticking. You know, you, we got a historical advisor. Oh, 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 oh. You know, so sometimes, Just you know, click, and, check and off sometimes, the sometimes, sometimes I'll be brought on to, um, you know, it, it, they'll send me a document. They want me to, you know, look it over. It'll be really mundane. And then sometimes, you know, I get brought on to, um, bring reenactors, bring, um, equipment and stuff to so your connections. To, yeah. It, so sometimes it's, it's advising. Sometimes it's bringing on, um, um, you know, a huge, a huge group. We did a, for Civil War, we did, uh, if you ever saw Family Tree, it's on HBO. It was with Chris O'Dowd. And uh, we, we reenacted a reenactment. <laughs> Had like 800 people out uh, at a different site than our normal reenactment. And we reenacted a reenactment. Why? What was the it, story? It was for the show. They, it was this uh, kind of weird guy brought his friend to a Civil War reenactment and he picked out a uniform. Picked the Zouave uniform. He was the only Zouave of course. in the field. It was really funny. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Chris O'Dowd really was. But what was so special about this reenactment that they're reenacting? Oh, or, no. Or it, was, it, it was literally just we needed to. to oh, I understand have, what you're saying. Have reenactors act as reenactors. It was a dramatic reenactment. Yeah, we, we weren't portraying yes. real Civil War soldiers. I we understand. were portraying reenactors. And actually, we did it for Rev War, too, on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. I yeah. love that episode. Yeah, I know it, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that, that was me. So you can see Shaven Me as von Steuben. Really? I'm leading Larry David into battle. Well, my God, we got another celebrity on the yes. show today. Good Lord. Now I got to go look that up. And and he's he's basically his character, but in real life. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was it was just normal Larry. That's the way he is, I hear. Yeah. Yeah, but I love he, that show. He enjoyed, he enjoyed reenacting. Yeah, he's uh, a big was, history buff. Yeah, he, uh, he, I've seen him, uh, he has pictures out in Gettysburg. Like he enjoys, he there's, enjoys there's one, a um, bunch of different stuff. of him behind the, oh, the, the cannon, cannon yeah, with his daughter cannon looking picture, bored yeah. out of her mind. But he really, you know, he talks a lot about history um, and he really appreciated all the stuff we did for Rev War. Um, it, it was it was a really fun project to work on. Here, wait a sec. Revolu how to reenact the Revolutionary War. Yes. This is me talking. This oh, that's man. you. Yeah. Forward at the half step. <laughs> March. March. And our post postage stamp size battlefield. Yeah. You're yeah. like 20 yards away from Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> Look at Larry. Battalion. Oh, oh, and we trained all the actors except Front for Larry. Ready. Make ready. Three hours to go here. Are you crazy? Get up. This is nuts. By God, sir, get back in ranks. You're not going to have any fun. Is that you? Uh, yeah, that was great. By God, sir, get back in ranks. That's not fair. It's not fair. That, that was very uh, nerve-wracking because I was uh, coordinating Larry, the shoot on, and I had to improv with Larry David. That's so. awesome. Oh. Hey, Larry, what the hell is like that? Like, they're really shooting. Oh, real? There's a crater in the ground. Oh, my God. His friend is supposed to be actually Stop shooting at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a great show. So that's awesome that you're in there. And then you, that's a pretty like clear shot of your face, too. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, pretty we, sweet. Um, all right. So let's get into something here we were talking about earlier. Before the show began, um, you, first of all, you, you random, like you have, um, what is that? Like Tourette's where you blurred out lines of, uh, the, <laughs> from the documentary from, yeah, no, yes. From the documentary yeah. called Gettysburg. Yes. It is a documentary I hear. Well, to many people it is. Yes. But in reality, it's not. I whooped you British twice as I recollect. <laughs> 
<laughs> and say, I wish we had, uh, if uh, Bo was here today, because then they can go uh, line for line. And, yeah. But and men in tall hats and gold watch Gold watch bobs and thump their, their chests. Chest. Yeah. yeah. Say what a brave, Super was, yeah. brave and valiant okay. charge was. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. I mean, I, I think butchered. that's. That's something you have to discuss almost on every Gettysburg podcast is... Uh, Movie versus... It, well, how reality. much did the documentary affect your life? <laughs> you know, it, it, we all, a lot of us grew up watching it as a kid. Yeah. You know, how, how much did it sink in? For the sake of the audience that's not picking up on your sarcasm, you're calling it the documentary. It's actually the movie Gettysburg with Martin <laughs> Sheen. That's what we're talking about here. So lest yeah. anybody and, think there's a documentary and, that we're parsing. And when you see through the veil... You realize how much is inaccurate, yes. but but it's it's part of almost the the Civil War subculture yeah. of of reenactors and history buffs, and you, you, it's the it, documentary. It's that weird thing that it it gets people into it, so it's it's good for that. Yeah, you know, it has a a, a good purpose. It has some value, but. The problem is that you can always tell a visitor who's a movie enthusiast versus a history student. Yeah, you know like, because like I, I'm really hoping while I while I'm here I can go to the site where where Buster fell. See, that's the problem is that Buster wasn't real. Daryl, I would think you would know this. I'm, I'm I don't know what to say. <laughs> How about I'm going to go read some books and. No, maybe you say no, that. I'm just going to watch it again. No, but you see, that's my point. <laughs> that's you're not going to. You don't get this. It you can't you can't go and watch the movie again and expect to learn something that isn't there. Um, Buster wasn't real. Well, I could watch the prequel. No, no, you don't want to watch that either because oh. it's Buster's in that again. But oh. it. <laughs> okay. So and that one. Real. No. Okay. No, not a lot of anything in that was really real. I mean, do you think do you Navy. think Chamberlain single handedly saved the yes, union? That's no. what I heard. That's what no. I heard from a lot of people around here. No, that's not what you heard oh. from a lot of people around here. <laughs> that's what you heard from fellow tourists, maybe. Yeah. But not 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 historians around here. It's true. <laughs> it's true. No, but let's talk about Fremantle. Artie Fremantle. Yeah. Lieutenant Colonel, right? He, he was at the time he was Lieutenant Colonel, actually uh -huh. retires a full general. Okay. So he uh When did he, he retire? In the uh, 1880s. Okay. He's, he's actually, his last war is the the Mahdist War in Sudan. Oh, wow. Um, so he's actually fighting the uh, the Hadendoa, or known as the Fuzzy Wuzzy. Um, that sounds scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they broke the British square at Abu Klea. It was uh -huh. like they were actually fearsome people sure. in, uh, in Sudan. Uh, so he fought in the desert campaign there and... Um, um, he uh, was, you know, had a had a pretty exciting military career. But as when he visited, um, when he visited the uh, United uh, States, the United States, he uh, was a lieutenant colonel. And he was about how old at that time? Um, he's in his thirties. In his thirties, young believe, feller. I believe he's in his thirties, but he, uh, um, I don't actually portray Fremantle. No, but so, you. So, so I would normally know my own birthday. But but you know I don't actually portray Fremantle. If you if you uh, yeah, yeah yeah and you don't and we're and we're not saying that you do but but you uh, you know about the British observers oh, yeah. uh, during the Civil War and Fremantle is probably yeah. in this in this little circle here in Gettysburg probably the most famous yeah, one. I have to talk about Fremantle the most, but I, I talk about Britain's role in the Civil War quite a bit. Okay, um, what was that? Give us some background into what the British role in the Civil War was. So. That's like a, a three hour discussion and, and, and prompts a lot of Can feelings. you boil it down? But, but um, there's um, there's observers that go back and forth. There are mercenaries, there are professional soldiers that involve themselves in uh, the that's Civil interesting. War on both sides. That's actually what I portray okay. in most of my reenacting is I, I portray a, um, a, a British soldier in Confederate service. Uh, because there were a lot that that took a leave of absence or resigned their commission and actually went and and fought. Mm -hmm. The other roles um, in the Civil War, um, public opinion. There's there's whether whether or not Britain was actually going to support the mm -hmm. Confederacy or support the Union. Mm -hmm. That is a, a a topic for a different day. Right. But, but there is there's strong arguments on both sides in Britain at the time. 
So these aren't uh, only military observers that are coming over. They're, no, they're diplomatic. They're yeah, governmental there are, there are civilians. There are um, there are a lot of reporters. Um, William Howard Ru- Howard Russell um, was the famous reporter in the Crimean War. This episode is now available over at patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. Please help support the show and become a patron today.